Good day everyone, hello classmates and hello also to Dr. Mabel. Let me present to you now the cooperative learning approach in reading instruction. So reading is a significant skill needed to learn and acquire a language, especially in learning second language. As a language teacher, it is essential that we teach with the right approach suited to our learner in our reading lesson. To give you a wider idea in reading instruction approach that might be useful and helpful to your classroom, I will discuss to you the cooperative learning approach. So before we get into the meat of this discussion, let me introduce to you the objectives of this session. So at the end of the discussion, the students must have defined learning or defined cooperative learning, identify the five basic elements of cooperative learning, shared challenges faced in using cooperative learning, formulated solutions to the challenges, created a plan to conduct a Be Brave workshop, and designed cooperative learning activities. Now that we had clear targets in mind, let us know what is cooperative learning. So according to Beth Lewis, cooperative learning is an instructional strategy that enables small groups of students to work together on a common assignment. The parameters often vary, as students can work collaboratively on a variety of problems ranging from simple math problems to large assignments such as proposing environmental solutions on a national level. Students are sometimes individually responsible for their part or role in the assignment, and sometimes they are held accountable as an entire group. Now, cooperative learning has received a lot of attention and praise, especially since the 1990s when Johnson & Johnson outlined the five basic elements that allowed successful small group learning. And these are positive interdependence, face-to-face -face interaction, individual and group activity, or group accountability, social skills, and group processing. So in positive interdependence, students feel responsible for their own and group's effort. And for the face-to-face -face interaction, students encourage and support one another. The environment encourages discussion and eye contact. Individual and group accountability, each student is responsible for doing their part. The group is accountable for meeting its goal. Social skills, Group members gain direct instruction in the interpersonal, social, and collaborative skills needed to work with others. And lastly, group processing. Group members analyze their own and the group's ability to work together. At the same time, the following characteristics need to be present. That is, when designing cooperative learning activities, teachers need to clearly identify the students, their individual responsibility and accountability to the group. Each member must have a task. They are responsible and that cannot be completed by other members. Benefits teachers make frequent use of group work and thus cooperative learning for a number of reasons. So these are three, which is change things up, life skills, deeper learning. For change things up, it is beneficial to have a variety in your instruction. It keeps students engaged and enables you to reach a larger number of learners. Cooperative learning also changes students' and teachers' role as teachers become facilitators of the learning, guide on the side if you will, and students take on more responsibility for their own learning. In life skills, cooperation and collaboration are, are crucial skills that students will continue using far beyond their schooling years. One of the key elements in a workplace is collaboration, and we need to get our students ready to cooperate, to be responsible and accountable, and to possess other interpersonal skills for effective professional lives. Cooperative learning is also proven to foster students' self-esteem, motivation, and empathy. Third, deeper learning. Collaborative with others has a potent and positive effect on students' thinking and learning through well-executed cooperative learning tasks Students often deepen their understanding of the assigned content. Students engage in thoughtful dis discourse, examine different perspectives, and learn how to disagree productively. Now let us discuss the challenges faced by the teachers in using cooperative learning, and I believe we can relate to that also. So despite of cooperative or collaborative learning being ingrained in teaching practices for decades now, it has also been de demonstrated that small group activities aren't always very efficient. Some of the main challenges turn out to be students' 
free writing, the lack of participation on behalf of some students, their focus on individual academic goals while neglecting collaborative goals, and the teachers' difficulties in accurately assessing students' participation. Now, what are the solutions to these um, challenges? Some specific recommendations resulting from the above-mentioned challenges are that teachers should focus on first, defining specific collaborative goals, Second, training students in social interactions for productive collaborations or collaboration. Third, is monitoring and supporting student interactions. Fourth, is assessing the collaborative process. And fifth, is applying the findings into future cooperative learning tasks. So for effective cooperative learning, ideally, cooperative or collaborative learning activities would invite students to be more active participants in their own learning to share and discuss their ideas, to engage in argumentation and debate, to play varying rules within the group, and internalize their learning. So a 2017 research paper by Ronsky et al. introduced features of good discourse and collaboration, also influenced by the association of the middle-level education. What we as teachers want from our students when they engage in any academic talk is what some call exploratory talk which is the talk. When learners can try out ideas, be hesitant, be tentative, relate new ideas to experiences, and develop a new shared understanding. Out of this need for new ways of teaching students how to be good international pay partners, Rodinsky et al. came up with the acronym Be Brave. So what is Be Brave? It is the workshop. If you are planning on including a small group activities as part of your instruction and want to avoid common complications outlined above, it is a good idea to devote a few lessons at the beginning of your courses to coaching your students. In order to set yourself and your students up for success, try the BRAVE workshop. Lengthwise, the workshop is designed to fit into a span of one week or five classes. So what are the useful materials for the workshop? First, we have multiple post-its per student, large poster papers, a slideshow depicting successful group collaboration, a short documentary video that shows important features of good collaboration, three or more challenging problem, problems the students won't be able to solve alone, and few short videos depicting students like yours collaborating together. For day one, we have good talk workshop. Silent discussion about the workshop's two central questions. These questions are, first, why collaborate? Second, what makes for a good collaboration? Instructions, first, each student collects their thoughts and writes them on a large post-it note. Everyone places their notes on a large poster paper in front of the classroom. Third, students are encouraged to look at others' thoughts and build on them with subsequent posts. Fourth, Throughout the length of the workshop, students can refer back to their post-its and add additional notes to the conversation. 5. Provide students with a difficult problem that they should solve individually and that they won't be able to solve alone right away and will revisit at the end of the workshop. For Day 2, Introducing Ideas About Collaboration, watch a slideshow depicting successful group collaboration. Next, all kinds of images from sports teams to NASA. As a class, discuss why how collaboration might contribute to the success of such endeavors. Third or fourth, if possible, watch a short documentary video that shows important features of good collaboration. Next, students take notes on the group process and discuss the important features. And lastly, teacher leads the discussion who points out important features related to BRAVE, which encourage wild ideas build on others' ideas. And for day three, which is introducing the BRAVE framework. First, introduce the BRAVE poster that will stay up in the classroom. Next, tell students BRAVE summarizes much of what researchers and professionals like people at Google do to collaborate successfully. Third, if possible, show a number of short videos depicting students like yours collaborating together. It doesn't have to be perfect, but can serve as an opener for a discussion about important aspects of BRAVE. The next, watch first time. Watch second time to take notes, one column for a video, one column for brave qualities. Then discuss the brave qualities and other things students noticed. And for day four, introducing the brave framework. Present students with a problem. Students are not allowed to speak, only to communicate through post-its or drawing or writing. 
tell students that the point is to slow talk down so that they can concentrate on the qualities of good collaboration. After working on a problem, the class comes together to discuss what they learned about good collaboration. And for the last day, which is day five, using BRAVE to engage in group work. First, each student writes down which BRAVE quality they want to work on. Split students into groups or four and have them read each other's choice of BRAVE quality. Let students work on a problem from day one together. Let them know that everyone should be able to explain the group's thinking. Then when they think they have the correct answer, they have to explain their reasoning to the teacher who will choose the reporting student. The last, if correct, the group will receive another problem. If incorrect, the group continues to work on the same problem. So to refresh what we've learned in this discussion, cooperative learning is an instructional strategy that enables small groups of students to work together on a common assignment or activity. It has five basic elements that allow successful small, small group learning, which are positive interdependence, face-to-face -face interaction, individual and group accountability, social skills, and group processing. There are difficulties that need to be solved and solutions need to be learned, and the Be Brave Workshop highlights the cooperative learning approach. For the reflection, first, define cooperative learning in your own classroom context. Second, what elements are present in your classroom when using cooperative learning? Third, what benefits does the cooperative learning give your classroom? Fourth, what are the challenges you faced when you ch used the cooperative learning and how did you deal with it? Number five, what do you think are the advantages of using cooperative learning as well as the disadvantages? Okay, so before I end this presentation, I want you to ponder on this line. Make it a rule never to give a child a book you would not read yourself. That is by George Bernard Shaw. So thank you everyone, thank you classmates, and thank you also to Dr. Mabel. I hope you learned from this presentation.